Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the Aftra resources creating VNI pools learning byte. And here is our topology. We have a an IP fabric uh, which consists of two spine devices, which is spine one and spine two and then four leaves, leaf one, leaf two, leaf three, and border leaf one. And then we have a few servers that are connected to the leaves that you can see at the bottom of the topology. And what we're looking to do with this learning byte, we're looking to create some VNI pools. And these VNI pools, we're just creating them right now. We're not going to apply the resources anywhere. That'll be a different learning byte, so definitely keep an eye out for that. And so we're gonna create three VNI pools. And only two of those we'll be using in the future. But we have VNI1, VNI2, and 3, you can see at the top left. VNI1 is going to be a pool of VNIs of 5001 to 5099. VNI2 is going to be 6001 to 6099. And VNI3 is 7001 to 7099. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the web interface of Abstra and get this going. All right, so here is the Aftra web interface, and we first need to go to resources, as this is one of the Aftra resources, and go to VNI pools. And here we can see that there's no VNI pools configured, so we need to click the Create VNI Pool button on the right to get this going. And what we need to do is we need to name it and then specify the range for the pool. So the first one was simply VNI1, and the range was 5001 to 5099. And one thing that's kind of good here is you can create a VNI pool with multiple ranges. And so we could do this by clicking the Add a Range button, but we're not going to do that right now. And then we can click the Create Another button since we do want to create another VNI pool. And that simply creates the previous pool, and then we're given the Create VNI Pool window again where we can specify the new pool. And the next pool was VNI2 for the name, and then the range was 6001 to 6099. And then we won't click Create Another here, even though we do need to create another one, because I want to uh, look at the cloning feature that these pools have. So we'll click Create here, and we see we've created the two pools. And we want to create the third pool. Well, we can duplicate VNI2 or VNI1 for that matter, just one of the pools, by using the clone button. And we'll click clone, and it brings up the clone VNI pool window. And here we can specify the name. By default, just gives it VNI2 copy, so whatever the name of the previous pool was, with copy at the end. And of course, we don't want to leave it like that. We want to say VNI3. And then we need to specify the range. And this is 7,001 to 7,099. And we can click Clone here. And when we do that, it drops us into the details of that pool that we just cloned. And you can see the name in the pool. You see the status that's not in use. That's expected. We haven't assigned the resource to anything yet. We see total usage, 0 out of 99. And range usage, 0 out of 99. Now, we could have multiple ranges here. and that would increase the total available usage. And see here, we only have one range, so it's the same as the total range, uh, the total usage, that is. And then we can see the actual range here as well. And so we can go back to VNI pools here, and we can see our three VNI pools. Now, looking at this, you can see that pretty much all the same information is there. That was at the details when we looked at VNI3. So we can see here the total usage for all pools, the range usage, the numbers, the VNI numbers, uh, the actual VNIs we're using, and the status as well, as well as actions of edit, clone, or delete. And so what I want to do now is let's go ahead and create an additional range for one of the pools. So let's select VNI3 and select add a range. And then let's say 8001 to 8099. And then we'll click update. And when you do this sometimes, sometimes the page doesn't automatically refresh. So let me just manually refresh the page and we should see that additional range. And here we go, VNI3, you can see that we now have two ranges and both show zero out of 99 
And then in the total usage, we see zero out of 198. That's great. And so one other thing I do want to show is the query option. We can query based on the pool name. And all these are VNI, but if we were to query on one and hit apply, then we only see VNI one. And that's great. And so hopefully you actually name your pools a little more better than what I did. I did a very generic naming scheme here. And so it would help more with the query function to find individual pools. And then we can also filter on the status. The only status we have here is not in use. So we'll select that and click apply. And of course, it doesn't change anything for our view because, well, all of our pools are not in use. And so let's click on that and clear that. And then to get rid of the pools, since they're not in use, it's as simple as clicking the delete button, as you see here, and you can individually delete each VNI pool. So that does bring us to the end of this learning bite. In this learning bite, we demonstrated how to create VNI pools with Abstra. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.